Well, hello friends. In this video, we will be discussing on uh, the symmetries and the Poincaré group. So, the Poincaré group consists of the translations as well as the boost and the rotation. So, uh, x going to x, so x mu going to x mu plus epsilon mu. So, this is the translation in space as well as time. And then we have the Lorentz transformations which has boost and rotations. So, that is um, x mu going into uh, the Lorentz transformations uh, x nu. So, these uh, two together they form a group that is the Poincaré group and the Lorentz transformations individually they form uh, a group in themselves and orthochronous uh, they are the uh, Lorentz group. So, now we have discussed the idea of symmetries and while doing that we have understood that uh, if a field changes by some amount, some transformation then that corresponds to a symmetry uh, when the Lagrangian changes by a total derivative and the symmetries corresponding to every symmetry we have a conserved current that is given by this form and this uh, comes uh, by varying the uh, action. So now once we have understood that we also have seen the conserved charges given in this form. Now what we will do is we will see how what are the conserved currents that will arise from performing a transformation performing Poincaré transformations on the space-time and that will correspond to a transformation on the field itself. So here phi is a uh, real scalar field. So performing a, a translation will cause such a change in the field. So this what we have done here is the Taylor expansion. So we have taken uh, phi of uh, x plus epsilon and have done the Taylor expansion. So this is the delta phi a and now similarly what we can do is uh, we can we can then take the Lagrangian which is in turn a function of phi and derivative of phi uh, but phi depends on x so there is an in, uh, implicit dependence on x and the Lagrangian changes in this way. So now we see we can bring this into the form of a total derivative that is given by uh, del mu f mu. So this is the total derivative form and the f mu is given here. So with all this thing done we have to given a transformation so we have been given such a transformation and corresponding to this transformation we have recognized we have recognized what is the uh, corresponding to this transformation what is delta phi and what is delta l but delta l is of the form of del mu f mu so we need to recognize what is f mu so once we are done with the f mu part and the del phi part we can plug them inside the formula for uh, the current the general formula for current and then we can see that the formula of current can be simplified in this form. So this is what uh, we see here, uh, the current can be written in this form. So here epsilon is a small translation in space time and it is contracted completely and there this tensor, this is a uh, tensor which is the uh, energy momentum tensor. So this energy momentum tensor uh, uh, occurs out of the translation in uh, space time direction. So the energy momentum we can raise and lower the index to get such a tensor. This is the energy momentum tensor. And now corresponding to this we can now find the conserved charges. So for conserved charges now we remind that it is a d cube x of j0. So j0 means mu will be 0 so we put here mu 0 and that finally we can see that the conserved charges are the 0, 0 component and 0, i component. It turns out the 0, i component are called the momentas and the 0, 0 components are the uh, energy. So, as a result of transformation, translations in space-time direction, we see corresponding to those, we have uh, energy and the momentum as the uh, conserved charges. And the tensor, I mean energy momentum tensor is the conserved current. So now we will uh, go uh, further uh, into a better understanding of what is uh, the charges uh, corresponding to uh, Lorentz transformations. So Lorentz transformations are the another part apart from the uh, translation that forms the Poincaré group. So the first part, this is the definition of Lorentz transformations. They keep the space-time interval that is delta S. Uh, that is dt square minus dx square minus dy square minus dz square. It keeps that interval unchanged. So that gives us this definition here. And then what we can do is we can perform a expansion of this Lorentz matrix. Like this we see this is the matrix corresponding to uh, rotation. Uh, rotation about the axis x. So rotation about axis x. And then this matrix can be expanded by expanding the sine and the cosines. 
which gives us something of this form. This identity is the Kronecker delta and then we have some another extra coefficient. So such a Taylor expansion can be performed uh, for this matrix. And then we can plug this into this part, the first part, and then we can expand both the sides. So when we expand both the sides, we see we will ignore, we will set the omega square term to zero. So this and this term will give an omega square that we will set to zero. And we will then simply uh, uh, do the product, the product of the three brackets, these three here. And this gives us finally the fact that the expansion, the Taylor expansion of this Lorentz matrix, they break into the identity and some sort of an anti-symmetric matrix. This anti-symmetric matrix or this tensor is very important uh, because of its anti-symmetric nature. We can uh, straight away say that uh, we will uh, see that we it only will have six components because you see a four a four cross four matrix that is anti-symmetric will be, will have six independent entries and this six independent entries are important because there are three boost and three rotation so we expect such a uh, expansion so with this uh, we see that once we have obtained this we can now again do a taylor expansion of our fields we can expand our fields in this form and this and then we can read the delta phi a and just read the uh, total derivative term the total derivative term in the total derivative term when we read them we commute the del mu and x nu so uh, so in general in general suppose we have del mu lagrangian and here we have x nu this is not equal to del mu of uh, x nu l that is quite obvious because of this part here but in this case we have a omega mu nu associated so this tensor uh, this tensor takes care of this commutation between the derivative and the x because you see omega mu nu whenever mu and nu are same then only this derivative doesn't commute but whenever they are same this tensor is zero because of its anti-symmetric nature so this means that we can uh, extract the f mu's also so now we have extracted the del phi's and the f mu's we will just uh, put them back into our this formula for uh, the currents and then what we will see is what we will see is the current will simplify again it will simplify again into this form you can see j mu is given in this form here so you see exactly we have identified the energy momentum tensor sitting inside this current that is obtained from the uh, lorentz transformations also but along with this we can see that there is a position dependence also this position dependence comes outside because of the uh, commutations and uh, summations over the uh, indices following einstein conventions and now what we can see is that what we can see is uh, the j mu is written in this form but we can uh, do a bit more simplification so you see j mu nu is written in this form here but we can exchange this indices because they are summed so we will put the beta upside and beta downside that brings us to this part and now there is a summation between beta and alpha so when we uh, perform this summation the alpha will take the value beta and beta will take the value alpha while doing the summation but then we will see that due to anti-symmetric nature we can pull the omega alpha beta outside to write it in this form now this here we had 4 cross 4 16 entries but now we just have 6 because we have used the omega alpha beta property so at this point we can just remove this entire thing and then we can say that there are 6 currents so there are 6 currents uh, which we couldn't have understood from this part but we understand from this part and with those 6 currents we see that uh, there will be corresponding uh, charges, conserved charges, by setting the mu term to be zero. So you see, in this part, we have the six currents. But now what we will do is, we will just uh, set mu equal to zero to get the conserved charges. And corresponding to uh, alpha beta, now when alpha beta, uh, one of the component is zero, we will get what is called the conserved charges of boosts. So when one of the component is zero, we get the conserved charge of boost. And when both the components are uh, running from 1, 2, 3, like Q1, 2, Q2, 3, Q1, 3, these components. So these are the conserved charges of rotation. So we see there are six conserved charges. And these charges are uh, nothing but they are the angular momentums. And here we have the boost. Uh, they are just the charges corresponding to the boost. So now what we can do, uh, so we have seen that uh, in the Poincaré group, 
for the Poincare group, we have seen that uh, translations. So x, uh, so here we see, uh, so here there is translation. So these gives rise to three. Uh, uh, so these gives rise to four charges. Uh, so one is energy, and another is the three momentum components. And here these gives rise to uh, six, uh, three from boost, and three are the three angular momentum components. So there are total ten conserved charges here that we see. So there are ten conserved charges in total. Now uh, let's look at a quick example here. So suppose we have the Lagrangian of the Klein-Gordon equation, the Klein-Gordon Lagrangian. We can uh, try to find the uh, the energy momentum tensor corresponding to it. So uh, the the formula for energy momentum tensor we have uh, derived it here. So we can see that uh, it is of this form, uh, del L over del del mu phi a. So we just need to find this term here, and then we can substitute it. So here we see uh, how to proceed. So this is the L and del L over del mu phi a. We can uh, see that it is del mu phi, and then we can substitute it here uh, to finally get this form. But now we can raise and lower the index using this uh, to finally get this. Form. So this is the T mu nu component corresponding to the uh, corresponding to uh, this uh, Klein-Gordon equation. We can what we can do is we can uh, see what it says. It says that integral d cube x t zero zero. Uh, it is integral d cube x. Uh, so if I put zero zero, it is del phi uh, del phi uh, minus uh, g zero zero. That is minus. Uh, so that is one. So minus l. So now l itself has uh, something of this form. Uh, so what we will finally end up getting is. Integral uh, d cube x. Uh, so uh, let's see. I have put zero zero here. So here there is zero and here there is zero. So finally the Lagrangian will also have such a term that will cancel. So we will get what we get is. So del zero if I call it phi dot half phi dot square plus half uh, the gradient of this thing uh, gradient of phi whole square. And then we will have plus uh, half m square phi square. So this is the uh, energy part of this, and this is precisely the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian written as d cube x times the Hamiltonian density. So that's all for this video. In this video, we uh, understood what is the uh, the ten conserved charges uh, corresponding to the uh, Poincaré group. So that's all.